Okay, welcome back to creating a cryptocurrency in Python. In the last video, we looked at our SQL helpers file, which I ended up coding a bit of and then providing the link in the description from the last video. I will also put a link to this code in the description of this video. So if you didn't download it before, you can download it now. I did make a couple changes to it that weren't shown in the video. Uh, such as uh, correcting this function or this if statement here. Uh, so if you could download that, that would be great. And just to kind of summarize what it's doing is it's just uh, accessing a MySQL table uh, in a lot easier of a way than we would normally with uh, doing something like this where we do cur equals MySQL connection cursor and then executing a line like this, delete from table where value equals something and then committing that and closing the cursor. So we kind of do that every single time, every single time we want to do something. So I've made all these functions just to do things a lot easier. So let's test them out here. If we import our SQL helpers file and, and we will import all methods from it. So we'll say from SQL helpers import star, which means import all. And then, and let's just do it in our index function here. So when we refresh our main page, this code will run. Let's um, say users, and this is a table that we created, I think in the last video. So equals table users. And then the columns of that table were name, email, username, and password. Okay, so now we've defined our table users. Let's just uh, make sure our app is still running and then we'll refresh our main page here and it didn't give us any um, exceptions or yeah, it didn't give us any issues. So then the next thing we'll do is we'll try and drop that table. We'll say users.drop. We'll make sure that works. We can delete our table just fine. And before we run that code, let's make sure that this table still exists. We'll say select all from users and we have an empty set here. So we have a, we have a users table. Um, let's try and insert some data actually first as a test. Let's try users dot insert um, John Doe, JD at gmail.com, John Doe and then hash, because we need some password there. That will ultimately be an actual uh, SHA-256 hash. Just right now, I'm not gonna bother with putting that hash there to make sure this works. So we'll save that, and then we'll refresh our main page. And if we look at our MySQL table, select all from users, we now have this inserted into the table very nicely with that one line of code. Okay, now let's try and delete. Um, let's try and delete the entire table with users.drop. So let's refresh. And if we do select all from users, we have error crypto.users does not exist. So we've just deleted our table and that was very easy. Okay, so now I'm just gonna delete this code because we don't actually want that to happen every time we load the main page of the file. Uh, so we can get started on coding the registration page for the user. So this is gonna be a bit complicated. It might take the span of this video and the login page. They might, they might take a couple videos to make. So we're gonna start with our app.root or slash register. And then we're going to have a form on this page so the user can submit data. So we're gonna need the methods um, get and post. Just like that. Now we can define register. And we're going to return a render template for a new HTML file register.html. Cool. And now let's go inside of our templates and we will create register html and we'll just put an h1 tag saying register here for now just to make sure that that works okay cool let's save it and we'll refresh clicking on register we now get to our register page at forward slash register 
Perfect. Okay, now we have to do some coding here. We're going to need to create a form. And we're going to call that form a register form. And that's going to take in the parameter request.form. Sorry, the argument request.form. And let's make a file actually to kind of streamline our forms here. Uh, let's call it forms.py. So forms.py. Okay, and then in here we're going to need to import wt form. So let's go over to our terminal command line and open up a new tab and we'll pip install wt forms. And you can see I already have it downloaded, so make sure you do install wt forms. Now we can go over to our forms file and we'll say from wt forms import form with a capital F string field decimal field integer field text area field password fields and validators cool and then in our app we're going to import forms so we'll say uh we'll say from forms import all and cool. Okay, now we need to create a register form inside of here. So we're going to do that. We're going to call class register form, and that's going to take in the parameter of a form object, or it's an extension of the form class. Okay, now when we register a user, we want the user to enter their name. So that's going to be a string field where they can enter their full name. Um, and then we want to make sure that that is a certain length. Um, so their name isn't uh, an empty string and it's not excessively long. So we're going to make it in between one and 50 characters. Then we want the user to enter their username, which is also a string field. And same thing, we want to make sure that the string field uh, for that the user does not enter some really short username or some really long username either. So let's do it between four and 25. And then our email is also going to be a string field again. And a minimum length for an email should be six characters and a maximum of 50. And then the password, we want them to enter their password, but we also want it to be uh, kind of masked as it's entered so we don't see the text. So this one is not a string field. This one is actually called a password field. And we can enter the password. And then we want uh, this to be required. So we're going to say validators.data required. And I'm going to type it in there. And we also want to confirm that it's equal to um, another value here. So we'll call that confirm because we want them to enter their password twice. So this will also be a password field, uh, confirm password. So that we want to say validators dot equal to confirm. And if it's not equal, we'll provide the message Passwords do not match. Cool. So that's that. Um, now, if we go over to our app file and we refresh on register, hopefully we don't have any errors. And it doesn't look like we do. So let's continue with this here. We now have created an instance of the register form using request.form. And we can continue by um, creating an instance of the users table. Again, we're going to need that to add our new user. So that's going to be a table users um, name, email, username, and password. Perfect. 
Now we want to see if they, the submit button of the form is pressed. If it's not, we just want to return the render template. So we're going to use the code if request.method is equal to post and the form is validated. So all of the, these validators are, um, are true. So we're going to say if forum dot validate, and then in here we can add our code. Otherwise we're just going to return the render template like that. And if we refresh, we, we didn't really change anything on our HTML page. So nothing looks different here. We've just done some backend stuff. So now we'll continue with our register.html page here. Okay. And uh, we'll, we'll add our form in here. So we're going to have to have form uh, method is equal to post. And inside of here, we actually need to pass the parameter. So we need to pass this form into our HTML code here. So we're going to add the code form is equal to form here. Cool. And now we can import that form into our uh, register.html file. And we'll do that um, by saying action is equal to none. And then we can do our first uh, input um, value equals and when we do these two, uh, these two lines like this, or these two curly brackets, we're referencing Python code actually in our HTML. So we can do request.form.name in our first input, and we'll call that full name like that. Um, let's make it a label. And let's do the same thing for the email. And the same thing for the username. And the password. I'm just going to add input test of form password. And the last one will be confirm password. Okay. Um, then we just need a submit button. So we'll do a button type equals submit. Um, register and n slash button. Okay, hopefully this works. Okay, so we now have our form popping up. It is formatted a little bit weird, but we will fix that in the future. Um, and in the next video, we'll look at taking the data from this form and putting it into our MySQL table. Okay, I'll see you then.